Okie dokie, boys and girls. We're still at SOP Tokyo Barcelona, and this time I have reasonably freshly minted SAP person, otherwise known as DJ Adams, also known as Q Macro on Twitter. Very well known individual. Code geek and beer fan. In that order. In that order, obviously. <laughs> um, you're doing a lot of tutorials this? Yes. What kind of things are you talking about? Um, well, tutorials in general, we've got all sorts, we'll come back to, but tutorials at Tech at here, we've got the app app environments on the SAP yeah, platform. Yeah. Uh, we've got the application programming model uh, uh, set of tutorials in a mission. We've got S4HANA um, in-app extension tutorial, and we've got a SAP Cloud Platform portal tutorial. Okay. So a lot of different stuff. Now, to me, you have a reputation for being a tinkerer, okay? you like Not a tinker. No, a tinkerer. <laughs> you like playing around with programming yes, languages. You like playing around with frameworks. Um, you're not necessarily um, a huge fan of ABAP, per se. Not... But you, you'll work with Oh, it. we've got a lot of history. Yeah, yeah. Me and I have got a lot of history, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you all have lumps and bumps with it, okay? But you've come into this job. How long have you been in the job now? Uh, since February, so less than a year. Less than a year, right, okay. And <clears throat> and you said that, you before we started recording this, that, you know, once you come in inside the house, then obviously things are a little different. And you described it as kind of try, like walking a little bit through treacle, trying to work your way through some of this stuff. Can you explain what that that, that would be? Yeah, so so the, the treacle wasn't necessarily inside of SAP, however, so the, the treacle I was talking about was um, you know, cloud platform and all the different choices. So for me as a, as a tinkerer, of course, oh, yeah, I, I, other stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but and, and that was in the in the context of you know, you know, yeah, I do play with a lot of stuff and, and therefore you know, I enjoy that choice, but I sort of need to be guided a little bit as well yeah i can't decide oh shall i use this shall i use that um, and that's where we got onto the application programming model yeah, you know, yeah which yeah, we have a mission yeah. and everything and that's almost like um uh you know an opinionated uh, uncle that's going to say well you know here's this golden path that you can take and then you can branch off accordingly uh, you know as and when you choose in whatever language that you care yeah. to work with and it's not going to make any difference that's right so it's it means that some of the choices that you might have to make that are language specific are no longer problematic for you or um so the, so the, so the, there's i mean the way that the application programming model in general causes you to think about building applications causes you to think about in three lumps you know a ui service or, and persistence right um, and if you look at the persistence then you know you've got Different choices there. You've got Hana, you've got Postgres, you know, the services on uh, Cloud Foundry and Neo, you've got you know, Cloud Foundry specifically, Postgres, MongoDB, Hana, right. and so on, right? Yep. And then if you go sort of uh, local, you've also got small tools like SQLite, which is just as just as important for you know building prototypes and so on. So, you know, what do I use? Do I have to use Hana straight away? No, you don't have to use Hana straight away. You know, play around with SQLite on your local laptop, and then you can rebuild the, the database artifacts for Hana. You know, based on the same data model that you wrote in the first place. So there's that sort of, okay, well, I don't know what choice to make, but I don't really have to make a choice. I can choose this and then choose something after that. Then from a from a service point of view, you know, we mentioned different languages. Um, the application programming model supports uh, Java and Node right now, uh, but that's not to say it won't support other uh, languages as well. I've been asked to mention Erlang. By uh, somebody called Chris, maybe, or somebody else. It's funny you should say that, but we won't go there. In terms of, we won't we won't name and shame, but uh, but that particular individual has a, a, a penchant. Yeah, yeah, and and I I understand why he, he thinks that way. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to ask you, Erlang or not? I yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, lots of things that Chris is also a fan of. Let's, let's put it that way, Scala as well. Um, and in, in terms of, well, yeah, yeah, but in terms of... I um, love Scala. Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, Scala is a really interesting thing. I mean, I know we're digressing a little bit, but Scala is really interesting because, you know, it's you can do really cool functional stuff with it, functional programming, but also you can do procedural. We used we used Scala Lift when we built ESME back in the day. That's what we did. I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking from over the fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, so so there's the, there's the idea with... Cloud platform and specifically <coughs> cloud foundry environment, there's the whole idea of language build packs and languages that you know SAP supports out of the box, as it were, you know, uh, Python, Java, JavaScript, uh, j- uh, in the form of Node.js and everything. But then you've also got the different build packs. 
Um, and you can, you know, you can build your own build pack as well if, you, if you've got some obscure language. Uh, bring that along as well. Um, so, so there's the there's a, the difference between language choice at the Cloud Foundry level and language is supported at the moment with the application program. So essentially, what you're saying is, if I've understood this correctly, and Bjorn has kind of talked about it. Yes, we're open. Yes, we're open. We're open in, in many different ways, but we're not open in every way yet because we haven't got it all put together. But, 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 APM provides us the pathway to be able to do that so that you will have those choices and they're not going to restrict you and they're not going to give you um, a heart attack when you're trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, yeah. So so if we take the... That makes sense. Yeah, and the, the third of the three things I mentioned, the UI... <laughs> Yes, of course, um, the tutorials that we have at the moment are using Fury or the, the front end. You know, why why not? However, one of the wonderful things is that the the philosophy of the application programming model almost celebrates the fact that it doesn't have to be Fury. It can be Angular, it can be React, it can be whatever you want. You know, oh, it, it I've could, got something for you. It could be headless. Thank you. The reason I say that, I, and that because that brings me to something I not just blew me away. I talked to the UI people about conversational UIs, which Ooh, is a, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because I said, you know, I run my business on my phone. I literally do. Yeah. And he showed me uh, a scenario and combined workflows that go between back office ERP, mm -hmm. into fulfillment, into sales, blah, 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 and then out to success factors for the purposes of rewarding somebody who's done a good job, right? Yeah, nice. And, I'm, and I looked at that, and I said, okay, fine. It's absolutely wonderful. Nobody else has seen this, by the way. I, I'm not allowed to show it, which is <laughs> incredibly frustrating. I said, right, listen, I said, I'm a business guy, and I completely understand this, what you've shown me here. I said... Now I'm going to give you the 10 other scenarios that I really want to have done this way. And he's, he looked at me and I said, yeah, your head's exploding, isn't it? And it's like, yeah, of course it is, right? I talked to Craig about this and he said, I've just thought about what is it you're explaining this. He said, I'm thinking about this as well, yada, 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 right? But here comes the problem. Most people that I come across who live in your world, they will tend to be in... Uh, big functional buckets like mm -hmm. success factors or like SD or like FICO or what have you. The moment that you're talking about a headless environment and a conversational UI, you now have to understand a huge amount of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Where are those people? I think the, I think the people are starting to appear. I mean, the, the, there aren't that many. No. Um, I bet you can count them on the fingers in less than two or three hands. Quite possibly. I mean, yeah. like, funnily enough, I, I gave a lightning talk yesterday on the, the available or the different developer paths available right. for SAP folks, okay. folks in the SAP ecosphere. And one of the things we talked about was sort of core skills that sort of um, go beyond any particular uh, vertical yeah. set of skills. And, you know, we talked about debugging, we talked about all sorts of things. And one of the things <laughs> we talked about was HTTP right. as an application protocol. Okay. Um, and another one that comes to mind when we're talking about conversational UI, headless, uh, and, and applications that are built on a distributed set of stuff across different SaaS solutions, across different PaaS solutions, and so on, is this idea of um, almost like piecemeal, I don't, I don't really use the, the, the metaphor of, you know, Lego, because it's not really like that, but it's, it's, it's the ability to see a bigger picture from a higher level, but still be technical enough to build functions, think in terms of event-based uh, triggering, and it's those sorts of developers. They they do exist, but because I think because the whole idea of serverless is relatively new, the whole idea of functions as a service, as in you build things out of small pieces, is relatively new at least in the enterprise world. You know, the, these developers or current developers aren't thinking that way yet. Okay, I spoke with um, Matt Steiner last evening. And he said that he's having conversations at a completely different level to that's those he would have been having maybe one or two years ago. And he made a really interesting observation. He said, I need to be a better storyteller. Right? He does, or you do? Yeah, he does. He does. Right? And he, he asked for, for some help. I'm absolutely going to give him some help on that. Because what you're talking about 
you and I can have that conversation and I mostly understand it. I won't understand it all because I, I'm not allowed to write code any longer, but I understand enough to, to make sense of it. But if I'm operating at that C level, level one, level two kind, I'm not necessarily going to be able to understand that, yeah. that conversation. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, is that guys like Matt and people like yourself and others are probably going to have to change their game to a degree yeah, I agree. To, to be able to interpret the, 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 the outcome that the individual is, has got swelling around in their head, yep. first of all into something that they can articulate and then something that can be developed, right? So all of these things that you're talking about seem to me to represent a picture that is emerging for which there ain't that many people around, but at least what I've seen here, and especially among the mentors, is an interest and a willingness to to listen and learn. That is an enormous advantage, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I don't see that elsewhere, quite frankly. I mean, elsewhere it will be, hey, show me this nice little thing that I can do in React. It's like, yeah, okay. I don't care. Yeah. But it's important at the same time. Do you see what I'm getting at? It, 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 I think and that's the change that I'm thinking needs to happen. Yes. And, and also, I mean, that, that sort of um, <clears throat> that, that vignette about React just then, for me, it's not about anymore. It's not about the, the awesomeness of React or the awesomeness of anything in particular. It's the awesomeness of the combination yeah. of these things. Yeah. And these things almost necessarily have to become smaller, will become smaller individually to be put together and to be reusable as well. So, you, you know, the conversational AI thing, right? I've played around with... Uh, well, everything's so event-driven now, right? Exactly, You've got yeah. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, I'm sure you were as well. I was playing around with PubSub, Publish Subscribe, you know, years and years ago, right? 1985, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so it, it, that, that's sort of co come to the enterprise world um, finally, yeah, yeah. let's call it. Um, and it's been around in the enterprise world for a long time. It's just been hidden in middleware. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But people are now sort of talking about it. Developers are talking about it rather than maybe architects. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, that's, okay. That, that's, that's my perception anyway. Right, right, right. Um, and developers are talking about it because um, rather than, you know, I'm thinking, for example, uh, Tipco or, yeah. um, or any, anything like that. Web methods. Web methods, guys, yeah. yeah. Those yeah, around yeah, those, for a long yeah. time. Um, but it was more that sort of software was looked after by people who weren't necessarily primarily developers, they were architects, architects. and technicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas nowadays, you know, if you look at the, uh, what we saw in the keynote, um, we saw, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna react to this event. How am I gonna react to this event? By writing, writing some actual code. Right. So all of a sudden, the, the realm of PubSub and the realm of event-driven uh, architecture is in the hands of the developer rather than, or, the, or is, is a requirement of the developer now to, to understand. Because it's been commodified to the extent that it can be built into the framework and you just accept, access it yeah. as and when you need. Right. So for me, the, 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 the more exciting, <coughs> not exciting, the more interesting question is how are we going to orchestrate all this in a controlled way? Because as soon as, as, soon as you start breaking things that down. Dick, that's the big question that Dick Hirsch has. Right. Because he's saying, you know, the, the more that you look at this, um, and the more services that you're uh, subscribing to, the more services that you're accessing, the complexity just goes really crazy. Yeah. yeah. And um, he and I will have a little bit of a discussion around that. And uh, SAP recognizes this. Yes. It knows that. Yes. And SAP knows, like everybody else, that there are no simple answers at this time, and nobody has got the magic word on it yet. Yeah. But people are thinking about it doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So you've had a good time here. I've had a good time. Yes. Uh, You're off to Bangalore as well. I am. My goodness. Yeah, a triple whammy for me this year, first time. That means you get great curry. No, looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>